Hey, good morning, everybody. It's the autumn equinox. Now, I don't know if there's anything significant in that. We shall see what happens as the day goes on. But anyway, this week earlier, uh, you might have seen, I went on the Piers Morgan Uncensored show, which is a bit of a joke as a title, because whenever I tried to say anything, I was censored pretty much by being shouted down. But I managed to get a few words out anyway. And then if you've seen the, the clip, um, the purpose or, or the focus and subject of the debate, as it were, <laughs> In, in inverted commas, was uh, the Ukraine situation. Now, of course, this has been escalating and escalating and escalating over six months. And I've said from the beginning, this was the easiest conflict to avoid. We should not have been getting involved and escalating the situation. I mean, <clears throat> southern Ukraine is of no strategic importance to the West whatsoever. But Ukraine is a country which is corrupt and it's been used to launder billions and billions of pounds of Western money, particularly uh, a lot of people connected with the uh, regime uh, that you have in the United States at the moment, the Biden regime and uh, people connected with it, with Burisma oil and so on. You can look into that. I think everybody knows the facts about that. Um, and it's a place where there are bioweapon labs have been set up. And then uh, one of the things that Russia did at the beginning of the conflict is they exposed the existence of these bioweapon labs, which the Biden regime denied until their existence is proven. And then they said, oh, yes, well, they are there. You know, so <laughs> there you go. Um, look, the people in the south and the east of Ukraine are ethnic Russians. You know, my view is if they have a referendum and they decide democratically that they want to secede from Ukraine and join the Russian Federation, which is their, uh, you know, they're, they're the same ethnic people, uh, and they have been killed, shelled, maimed by. Uh, national socialists uh, within the Ukrainian security forces for eight years, then, you know, that's fine with me. I, I have no problem with that uh, happening. Um, but unfortunately, the Western leaders uh, have got involved from the beginning. They've been uh, banging the drums of war. They've been sending billions of pounds of what's called lethal aid. This is a new term, not foreign aid now. Lethal aid to Zelensky, his regime and his security forces, uh, which include national socialist groups and now also include uh, Western private military companies. So it's quite disturbing uh, to hear that there's a private military company which is called, what is it called? Academy which is uh, involved and uh, operating in Ukraine uh, now, according to a report uh, out of India. Uh, Academy used to be called Blackwater, uh, which was notorious for um, atrocities in Iraq, an American private military company now operating in Ukraine. So while they're saying, oh, there's no NATO forces in there, there are uh, NATO-backed private military companies operating uh, there. So this is really not good. This is the West getting involved uh, in the situation. Now, as we all know, from today, over the next five days, there's going to be referenda in Donetsk, in Luhansk, also in Kherson and Zaporozhye regions, oblasts, which is what the Ukrainian-Russian word for a region is. Um, and they're almost likely, all four of them are likely to say, well, we want to secede and we want to become part of Russia part of the Russian Federation. And then the Russian parliament will rubber stamp that immediately. So as early as next Monday or Tuesday, uh, referenda will have been held. And as far as Russia is concerned, those territories will then become part of Russia. Uh, so they will no longer view them as uh, as part of Ukraine, where they're defending ethnic Russians. They will actually be a part of Russia. Now, of course, uh, no country in the world, you know, apart from maybe Syria or Belarus, is going to recognise that. And Western countries are not going to recognise that. You've already got um, the statements from Western leaders saying, oh, well, this is just a sham and we're not going to recognise it. And then uh, immediately saying, well, they're going to give more uh, billions of pounds and dollars and euros of lethal aid um, to provide NATO weapons to uh, kill ethnic Russians uh, in the Donbass. 
Uh, and so this is an escalation which shouldn't be happening. Uh, we need to de-escalate now. We need to have calm and cool heads and we need to get round and negotiate and stop this from going any further. And that could happen. That, you know, we, we there could be an end to this tomorrow if there was the will, but there doesn't seem to be the will. But at the same time, um, Europe, the EU, uh, has imposed sanctions on Russia. Of course, the UK and the uh, US and Canada, etc., have all imposed sanctions on Russia, but they are backfiring um, on European countries. The UK, uh, here in the UK, we're very much affected by it, but Germany is affected even more. So while, you know, we are in the UK going to have real problems with uh, energy prices, which are going to, you know, bankrupt households and businesses over the winter because energy prices are going up by three times what they were a year ago. Germany is already um, sta stating that, you know, people need to have cold showers. Um, the lights have gone out on monuments and so on. Factories are winding down production, etc. already. Uh, so they are really looking at um, an economic failure, an economic collapse, which could all just so easily be avoided if they had not escalated this situation, not imposed sanctions, sat rounds, ended this. This could have been ended months ago, and then there wouldn't be any problem with, with energy prices, inflation, um, or um, economic uh, collapse and bankruptcy, more than what there is from the insanity of net zero. And uh, lockdowns, which have already caused a lot of the economic crisis, but then, you know, the, the sanctions on Russia and the escalation on, with uh, with Russia is is just putting the final nail in the coffin of economic collapse in Germany, uh, the EU, and perhaps the UK, and um, who knows what's going to happen in the US? It's a little bit more geographically removed, but of course Biden there has um, stopped. Uh, any <laughs> exploration for new uh, oil and gas um, reserves uh, being used. So they want to go totally wind and solar, uh, which doesn't provide any energy, of course, when the wind stops blowing and the sun stops shining. And uh, so that policy there is uh, likely to cause a lot of economic devastation in the US as well. I mean, it's almost like these leaders in the West are deliberately wanting to cause uh, an economic collapse and catastrophe for one reason or another. Well, the reason is, of course, because they want a new financial system based on central bank digital currencies, which will be programmable uh, and uh, lead to a cashless society where no one will have uh, freedom uh, or you know personal freedom or financial freedom uh, in the new world order that they want to create. So we must uh, not have that new world order and not let that happen. So, you know, this is one of the things going on at the moment, which it needs we need to keep on speaking out about, is that we need to de-escalate the situation because de-escalation is going to stop Ukrainians being killed, Russians being killed, everyone being shelled, everyone bombing and killing each other. And, and the poor, you know, I don't have any sympathy, as I've said before, for national socialists, but the poor conscripts from Western Ukraine, from all over Russia now, that are going to be drafted to fight on the front lines in the Donbass, creating a situation, you know, pretty much like the Battle of the Somme in the First World War, where hundreds of thousands of young men from both sides are just going to be sent there to kill each other. Uh, and the people in charge don't give a monkeys about their lives. You know, they'll fight to the last Ukrainian, uh, to the last Russian conscript. And then what? Then what? You know, they're all going to die for nothing because what? The, the, some people just want a continuous perpetual war um, to carry on um, because they will make money and they'll pillage the last... Uh, little bits of wealth uh, from the the uh, economies as they are before they collapse and so on. So we need to turn back from this. Um, we have a new prime minister in the UK, of course, Liz Truss. And after the Queen's funeral and the, the mourning period for Queen Elizabeth, you know, which lasted a week and a half, the very next day, the very first thing she did was go over to the UN uh, General Assembly, which I suppose, you know, that's... 
everybody went there, so she had to go because, you know, the prime ministers of uh, and the presidents of most countries are over there in, in New York. But yeah, she gave a speech which was just full of inversion and gaslighting, you know, saying we going to we want to defend freedom and democracy when she's part of the regime the johnson regime which completely ruined and destroyed freedom and democracy in the uk for the last 2 years over the lockdown period along with all the other western leaders who were banging on about freedom and democracy when they spent uh 2 years locking the country down shutting down businesses sending the police around to people's homes to arrest and fine people for going to church, for sitting in a park, for going for a walk in a park, for having a coffee morning with a couple of neighbours. Police were going round and uh, knocking on people's doors to harass them and arrest them for just doing ordinary, normal things. So any one of these people who speaks about defending freedom and democracy is a complete and utter hypocrite. They have no way, there is absolutely no platform that they can stand on and they have the right to talk about freedom and democracy when they have been actively been destroying it uh, over the whole lockdown period so give me a break please um you know utter complete hypocrites um we need to de-escalate the situation in in ukraine and and that is the way to um continue freedom democracy and and try to get back to a place where uh, we have some economic stability and prosperity. We need to end the sanctions on Russia. I have no problem with Western nations continuing to buy Russian gas and opening Nord Stream 2. If we lift the sanctions, uh, they'll open Nord Stream 1 again, which has been closed. I don't blame them for doing that. I mean, it's, it's mad. <laughs> European countries say, well, we're never ever going to finish Nord Stream 2 because Russia bad. And then Russia says, OK, well, because of maintenance issues, we're going to close Nord Stream 1. And then everyone says, oh, you're using gas as an economic weapon, as a weapon of economic, you know, <laughs> warfare. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, what do you want? What do they want? There's no consistency. There's just complete nonsense coming from these Western leaders. Um, you know, obviously, I'm w one of only two party political leaders in the UK who's calling uh, for an end to this. The other one's George Galloway. You know, I like George Galloway. I don't agree with him on a lot of things, but I like him. He's a, he's a gentleman. And uh, you can talk to him and discuss things uh, openly. And he'll listen to you, and then he'll put his point of view, and then let me put my point of view, and so on. So we agree on some things. We disagree on others. We certainly agree on this, that we should be de-escalating tensions in Ukraine. Maybe not agree on other things. Unlike... Piers Morgan and uh, Richard Tice when I was on the uh, Piers Morgan uh, Uncensored show on um, uh, Tuesday. So I'll, I'll put a link to that underneath so you can watch it if you uh, um, didn't see it before. But there you go. That That's the situation. So, you know, I think things may escalate in the next uh, few days. We'll see what happens when the referenda happen. Um, and uh, the, the thing is, we must... At any costs, at all costs, avoid a nuclear uh, conflagration, and it, because this is this is dangerous, this is on the cards now. So we need cool heads, and we need to step back from the brink. And you know, so I'm not going to stop speaking about that. Okay, thanks for listening, everybody. Please all speak out as well. Call for de-escalation in Ukraine and a return of sanity.